Hi. In this video, we're going to start walking through the conjoint analysis example from chapter 12. So this will be the first of a three-part video series, where in the first part of this video series, we will go over to R and we'll look at how to design, test the design, and estimate the part worths for our conjoint analysis exercise. In part two of the series, we will look at measuring things like attribute, uh, average attribute part worth and um, attribute importance and willingness to pay. And in the third part of the series, we will look at measuring market shares for products currently in the market, as well as hypothetical products in the market. So to get started, let's go ahead and go over to R for uh, looking at the design of the study. So in R, we're going to start by opening our R code from chapter 12. This will be called conjoint analysis. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger so we can see most of it. As always, the first step we're going to do is to install any packages that are necessary. In this case, we're going to install the conjoint package. And here I'm just going to select the cloud. Okay, our next step is to load the library for the conjoint package, which we need to do every time we open R. We don't need to install the package again once we've done it. And we'll go ahead and set our random number generating seed. Okay. Now, the next step is actually we're going to design our conjoint analysis experiment. And by design, it means we're going to select the attributes and the levels of the attributes that we want to include in our study. So here we're going to have one, two, three, four, five attributes. So we're going to have the attributes of the brand, uh, shipping cost, restocking uh, percentage fee, uh, number of days we can return, and price. Uh, and these are all for the um, smartwatch products that we're looking at here. Uh, we have four brands, uh, Chestnut Ridge, Apple, Samsung, Fitbit. We have three shipping costs, zero, 10, 20 uh, dollars. We have three, uh, four restocking fees, zero, 5%, 10%, 15%. We have three return days, seven days, 14 days, 21 days. And we have four prices. 150, 200, 250, and $300. So in this step, when we run this, we're going to create a list where each item on the list is going to be one of these five attributes. And within each attribute, we're going to have uh, different numbers of, in this case, uh, attribute levels. So we'll have four here, three, four, three, and four. Okay, now the next step is we want to create what's called the full factorial design. So we're going to take all of the possible combinations of these attributes and levels, and we're going to create uh, a list of those. So we're going to expand this grid so that we create the full factorial design. And that's what's in experiment. Now, we don't want to necessarily show all of these different profiles to our respondents, that's probably way too many. In fact, if we want to know how many rows, we can use the function. We click in the console and type n row experiment. And it tells us that we have 576 rows, which should be equal to 4 times 3 times 4 times 3 times 4, right? If we multiply out all of the different combinations. So what we're going to do is we're going to randomly sample a smaller set or what we would call a fractional factorial design. In this case, we're going to sample 30 of the different profile cards at random. And then we're going to check to see whether or not the 30 that we sample are sufficiently random that we do not have a cross attribute correlation. So we'll go ahead and run our design. Now, our, if we want to see what our design looks like, remember, it's only going to be 30 of these profiles. We can actually go to the console and just type design. 
and it will print out the 30 choices it made from the random selection. So we can see the different profile cards. The next step, though, we want to see whether or not these are sufficiently random. If there's no at across attribute correlation or very little, then we're happy. If there is a lot of cross attribute correlation, then we're going to pull another set of random profiles uh, for our study. So let's go ahead and run that. So this is just going to check for the design of our study and it'll print out a correlation table. So here we see the uh, any correlation table, our diagonal is always going to be equal to one, because that means that when a certain brand, like suppose we have brand Fitbit, when brand Fitbit is in our is in the profile, that that profile also has brand Fitbit. So we're always going to see perfect correlation um, between the, the, the same uh, attributes. What we're interested in is what is the correlation across attributes for our study design. Now, if we look at all of these uh, values in the off diagonal, we see most of them are close to zero. In fact, the largest one seems to be the 0 0.08 correlation between the price attribute and the brand attribute. So none of these are, are, are very high. They're all sort of close to zero. So for now, we're going to say our study design is sufficiently random. Uh, and we're going to move ahead with that study design. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take this study design, we'll go ahead and output it uh, to, um, so that we can actually um, use it uh, in, in a survey, right? Uh, we can load it into a survey software of our choice, we can go to respondents, ask them to rate these different profiles, uh, and then bring it back into R here to do the analysis. So let's go ahead and write out. So we're going to call this conjoint profiles.csv. And now we have a table that we can take to our survey design software that will help us ask people for their ratings for these different uh, profiles. Now we go ahead and we run the conjoint study. And what that essentially means is we go out and survey a set of respondents. So we went out and took that set of profiles. We surveyed 20 respondents. And then we got their um, uh, ratings for each of these 30 profiles. And that is going to be stored in this file called conjoint preferences. So we're going to go ahead and bring in the results of that survey. And now we have this table of, of survey results. If we want to look at it, we can click in the console window again, and type head of this pref table. And we can see here we have respondent one through respondent 20. And here are the first six profiles that they rated, where we know that zero means they don't like the profile at all, and 10 means that's a profile they'd be very interested in purchasing. Okay. Uh, we would have, in this case, uh, 30 total rows uh, of these responses from these 20 respondents. So now that we have the, pre uh, the preference data, what we can do is we can run the conjoint analysis, essentially estimate the part worths. Now, what we need to do for these part worths is we're going to run a regression for each of the different respondents. So each respondent can have their own set of part worths. Two things we need to do. One, we run a regression, 20 regression. So we're going to run a loop where for each of the 20, so number of columns, in this case, there's 20 columns, so it's going to run 20 regressions, and each of the regressions are going to extract these part words. Then we're going to evaluate those relative to a base case. So we're going to pick a base case. And in this case, we picked Chestnut Ridge, $0 shipping, zero or 0% 0 restocking, seven day return, and $150 as our base cases. So we're going to subtract out the base case and use that as our baseline. And so all of the part worths that we finish up with will be relative to the base case. So we're going to go ahead and run this 
section, and this section will run the analysis and uh, take out the base cases. So now we have a table that's called part.worths that has this information. Again, if we click over in the console window, we can take a look at it. We can see here, here are the part, average part worths for, or here are the part worths for each of the first six respondents for each of the attribute levels. Intercept captures our base case. We see our base case is going to be zero, and then all of the values, these part worths that we get will be all relative to this base case. So now we have the part worths estimated from our experimental design. We can now export these part worths and go over and do some visualizations in Tableau. So let's go ahead and run the last line, which is going to export these. We're going to put them in a file that's called conjoint underscore artworths.csv. And now we have the file we need. Uh, so we're finished with part one of this series where we have created the uh, experimental design. We then sampled from the full factorial design and created a fractional factorial design with 30 profiles. We sent those profiles out. We ran our survey. We got 20 respondents to respond to those 30 profiles. We brought in their preference ratings. We estimated their part worths. And now we're ready to look at the results and analyze them. So ahead in part two, we're going to go over to Tableau uh, and start to analyze those part worths.